Blessed day everyone! Welcome to my channel, Math with Mrs. O. I'm Ophelia Orate, principal owner of a school, a math teacher, and an author of 21 books. I taught in Philippine Science High School for 18 years and was the head of the math department or math unit for a time. You can use this review for your Philippine Science High School entrance exam, for your Ateneo, La Salle, or any science or non-science high school entrance exam for grade 7. I made sure that the math questions here are of the level of Philippine Science High School. Please don't forget to press the bell button and subscribe. Thank you. Let's start. Problem number one. What satisfies the equation? Parenthesis 4 minus 3 plus 6 equals 6 plus blank minus 3. Obviously, you will have here 4. Now, there are other problems which will ask you what property is being illustrated in this. Look at this. 4 minus 3 is here. It went there. And then the 6, which is on the second position, became the first position. What property is that? Commutative property. Remember that, commutative property. So, if it is, let's say, 2 plus 3 plus 8 became 8 plus 2 plus 3, that is commutative property because only the position or the order change. Now, what is the difference between commutative and associative property? If it is associative property, then you will see that 2 plus 3 plus 8 becomes let's say 2 plus the quantity 3 plus 8 what did you see the numbers inside the grouping are 2 and 3 whereas here you have 3 and 8 identity what about identity property identity property states that when you add 0 to a you get a so if you see something like 3 plus 0 equals 3, that is identity property for addition. But there is also identity property for multiplication. It says that a times 1 equals a. So if you see something like, like pq times 1 equals pq, or 100 times 1 equals 100, that is identity property. There are several properties that you need to recall because sometimes they are asked in an exam. Next, problem number two. The hand of a clock takes four minutes to go around once. So you go around once, it takes four minutes. If the hand starts at zero, where will it be after 11 minutes? Very easy. From here, you see, you have one, two, three, four, right? So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So the answer will be letter D. Problem number three. How would you read 1, 0,025? Is it 1,025, 10,025, 1,250, or 125? None of the above. So this is super easy. What's the answer? Letter A, 1,025. Now, let me give you other practice. Uh, let's read. Number one, how do we read this? See, I added, I added a zero at the, at the middle. All you have to do is to count from the last one, two, three. Put a comma, then that's a thousand. So this is 10,025. What about if I add another zero? Again, the same technique follows from the end. Count one, two, three, put a comma. So you have 100,025. Number three, you put another zero. So same technique, one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, now you have a million. So one million twenty-five. Oh, 
let's add another more zero. One, two, three, four, five zeros. Twenty-five. Again, from the last number, you count one, two, three. There, one, two, three. There. So we now have ten million twenty-five. Next problem is problem number four. In problem number four, how many sixes must be subtracted from 24 to get zero? So, 24 minus how many sixes for you to get zero? You will get zero if you subtract 24 from 24, isn't it? So now, ask, ask a question. What will... I multiply to 6 for me to get a, a 24 here. It is 4. So 6 times 4 is 24. So 24 minus 24 is 0. So how many 6s must be subtracted from 24 there? You have 4 6s. The answer is letter B. Problem number 5. What number is 100 greater than 2,346. When you say greater than, you add 100. So, if it is 2,346, you add 100 to it. That's the meaning of what number is 100 greater than 2,346. Add, add this two, you get 6, 4, 4, 2. 2,446. Uh, what if I say, let's have practice here. What if I say, what number is 100 less than 2,346? 100 less than 2,346. What will you do? So, you have 2,346. 100 less, you subtract, so you get 6, 4, 6, 4, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2. So it's 2,246. What if you say 2,346 decreased, decreased by 200? Decreased by is still subtraction so you'll have here 2346 minus 200 so you get 6 4 1 2 you get 2146 if you need to add what is the word used here for add to make this addition increased by so if this is changed to 2,346 increased by 200, your solution will be 2,346 plus 200. Th this will give you 6, 4, 5, 2. 2,546. What other words are used for addition? Add, sum, increase by. What else? Added, added by, added to. Let us review some words used for subtraction. Minus, subtracted from, subtracted by, decreased by, decreased to. We will have another video for that. Problem number six. Bob's room is 4 meters long and 3 meters wide. How many square meters of floor space does he have in the room? This is a simple area problem. When you say how many square meters, you're asked uh, about the area. What is the area? It's the same as asking what is the area. So you get the area of the floor space 4 times 3 we get 12 
meter square square meters so 12 this is square meters there do you see that square meters if you see square meters that gives you a hint that the problem is asking for the area problem number seven which of the following is a set of equivalent fractions equivalent fractions okay equivalent fractions are actually determined when you multiply a fraction which is equal to one for example here one third if we multiply a 2 over 2, remember, 2 over 2 is equal to 1. So, 1 third times 1 is just 1 third. So, you're not doing any harm. So, 1 third times 2 over 2 is now 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So, 2 6 here is an equivalent fraction to 1 third. 1 third times 3 over 3 is 1 times 3 is 3 3 times 3 is 9 so 3 over 9 is also an equivalent fraction 1 third times 4 over 4 is 1 times 4 is 4 3 times 4 is 12 so 4 over 12 also is an equivalent fraction remember again you get an equivalent fraction whenever you multiply a fraction which is equal to 1. So the correct answer here is letter A. Okay, let's have practice. Give me one equivalent fraction to 2 fifths. Okay, so the answer is 2 fifths times 2 over 2 is 2 times 2, 4. 5 times 2 is 10. Can we also have an equivalent fraction if we multiply a 5 over 5? Yes. So 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times 5 is 25. And observe that the equivalent fractions like this, these are equivalent fractions, are not in simplest form. They are not in lowest terms. They are not in simplest form. Problem number 8. Which equation below does not have a solution? Repeat, does not have, not have a solution. Letter A. If you have 9 minus n equals 0, what is n? 9. 9 minus 9 is 0, so A has a solution. Letter B. 9 plus 0 equals n. What is n? 9. 9 plus 0 is 9. So, n is 9. It has a solution. Letter C. n times 0 equals 0. What is n? Can n be 1? Yes, because 1 times 0 is 0. Can n be 2? Yes, because 2 times 0 is 0. Can n be 3? Yes, 3 times 0 is 0. So, what is n? n can be any real number. Because if you multiply any number to 0, you get 0. So it has a solution. The solution is n is any real number. Letter D. 0 times n is 9. Let us say we just let n be 1. 0 times 1, is it 9? No. 0 times 1 is 0. So this has no solution. The correct answer is letter D. Remember... When you multiply a 0 to any number n, your final answer is always 0. It cannot be 9. That makes letter D our answer. We're done. So, before we leave, don't forget to subscribe again. Press the subscribe and the bell button. And don't forget to add kindness, subtract judgment, Multiply understanding equals Mrs. O's good life equation. Thank you.